So from your point of view, what happened with the original Aunt Viv? <laughs> from my point of view? From your point of view. Um, you see, I mean, I, I don't think you're the one that made the decision, but from what you saw, what exactly happened? From what I saw, um, there was, what, from what I saw, there was a contract. I mean, there's, there's much more to it, and, uh, and I certainly don't want to get into all the intricacies of it. Um, but there was like contract um, dispute stuff. I know it's, there was some stuff started with that. And, um, you know, Janet was offered fewer episodes and that was a problem because she'd always been, you know, in every episode. And, um, you know, I don't know, I think she felt like she was having her wrist slapped. And I mean, there's just so many different elements to what happened and then where it finally ended up going which was when they when finally this decision was made for her to not be back um i wasn't in any of the rooms when any of this stuff happened so i don't know exactly i've just heard all my different i've heard different pieces of it um i'm sorry that it's been as i don't know i'm sorry it's been the way i'm sorry it all went the way it went personally you know I mean, did you see any issues between her and, and Will and, and Alfonso? Because that's some of the things that I... I, I know about. that's the stuff that... I know that's the stuff that comes up. And I've, of course, I've read, I've read everything and heard everything that everyone said. But so I'm aware of it like everybody. Yeah. I mean, because it's really strange for a sitcom to just replace a character. It was really weird. <laughs> it was. It was really weird. Like, here's your new mother. <laughs> like, here you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It was, it was really strange. I mean, I don't think, and yeah, no one would disagree with that. It was a really, it was a really odd thing to, to do. Yeah. You were really close with Uncle Phil. Yep. What were some of the, the greatest memories that you had with, with James Avery? Oh, my greatest memories with James were, uh, were not on set. I mean, I had a lot of great memories with him on set. Um, on set, <laughs> on set, we had a lot of really funny stuff because you know we couldn't. Um, we had a hard time with um, eating scenes because uh, we had if we had to be seated. Ever since the first season, when my character was blackmailed and I had to bark like a dog and all this kind of stuff happened, and we got the giggles really bad. The whole cast got the giggles really bad at the table, and. Um, they got very frustrated with us because we could, we were having such a hard time pulling it together. And but it was one of those things where once it happened, it started to happen all the time. Whenever it would be like a dinner scene and we were all seated, we'd look at each other and go, "Oh no!" You know, it would happen again where we get the giggles. And um, so I remember James from you know getting either frustrated or getting the giggles at the table. Um, I remember Will giving him a hard time about <laughs> he dropped something on himself like. See, there was food on the table, and Will would be like, don't eat the food. <laughs> don't eat the food, James. <laughs> Telling him that. And he's like, I wasn't eating the food. But then he had, he got a soil, a soil spot on his shirt, which was like this telltale giveaway that he had eaten the food. I'm sorry, it's funnier to me probably than anybody else. But we could not stop laughing because he kept saying he didn't eat anything, and he started to get really mad. <laughs> But he had this spot, so it was like, he's like, it was water, it's like, it's not going away. <laughs> anyway, getting the giggles over this thing. You had to be there. But James was, um, James was really such, our rooms were right next door for, God, were they always right next door to each other? And he played jazz music really loud, really loud. It was really good music all the time. And, um, and he'd, he'd, uh, he'd love to just tell you about who he, about, who he was listening to and about other jazz artists and he he was just really generous with that and he was such a generous person and a huge um just such a good spirit um i know i i had a lot of fun with him outside of the outside of work like especially after the show went off too um and we both lived in silver lake california we were neighbors. We bump into each other at the supermarket often <laughs> because we go at the same time of day. And um, I don't know. He's just you know driving around looking for houses. When I was looking for a house, him helping me look for a place. And 
spending time with him. I just, I loved him so much. I love him so much. He's just a really good, funny, fun, great guy. And he had a lot of influence, I think, on me to be doing um, uh, the Sweet Blackberry work that I do, too. I think he's a, he was a big part of that. Yeah. When he passed, did you have any idea that he was having health problems? I knew he was having health problems, but it was still incredibly sudden. What happened was sudden. You know, I, yeah, every time I saw him, there was, he was having challenges, you know, and he was in a wheelchair a lot um, at that point. Uh, because of yeah, you know physical stuff going on, you know. But James was always, you know, it was from the beginning of the show. I was always frustrated with James and his health. Yeah, you know, I was always chewing him out over something he was eating or smoking or something. You know, he was always, you know, he smoked, he ate, he ate sugar and you know all kinds of stuff that um, used to frustrate me. <laughs> And I would get on his case about stuff. Although he was in the hospital once and I brought him a uh, burrito <laughs> from some place that he really wanted, <laughs> but um, that he liked. But um, yeah, he's just, you know, he, was a, he was a great guy. That was a surprise though. I remember very well when I got the word. It was, because you, know, you get that word, it's so final, so frustrating, because you can't undo it, you can't back up, you can't do anything. Yeah, uh, how hard was that phone call when you got it? Ugh. Ugh, it was awful, it was awful. It was devastating. Yeah, I mean, I think he played, you know, I mean, you worked with him. Um, so I'm sure that the whole father figure thing with you was yeah. very pronounced. Yeah, he took it very seriously. <laughs> he always, you know, he'd always tell my husband, <laughs> he always on my husband's case all the time, <laughs> you know. Um, about that at our wedding he just kept laying into him about that but he was always you know he's playful but um, he called me daughter he used to call me daughter instead of calling me Karen he's like daughter da -da 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 daughter you know <laughs> um, which uh, I I got very used to and he was you know he was very fatherly yeah I mean I think for a lot of people you grew up wishing you had a father like Uncle Phil, yeah. you know, who's rich and successful right. and smart and educated. And I mean, even like if you listen to J. Cole's uh, album, not this one, but the one before it, where he's, he said, you know, first things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. You're the only father that I knew growing up. Like, people, people still remember that. Yeah, when he passed, I think, um, I was kind of overwhelmed by I didn't real. I mean, I guess I had just hadn't thought of it that way. I, I was overwhelmed by um, the outpouring of love and um, and people just and condolences and so many people just saying he was like a father. He was. They thought of him like a father. Like that's the father I wanted. That was my dad. And uh, yeah, that I didn't think of it, but of course they did. Yeah, and he played your father. And he was playing my father. Yeah, yeah. and I really, you know. I took it for granted, you know, I did, mm -hmm. I, that, but it was hard, I mean, I think when, like, when the show was over, I think that's one of those things that was hard about leaving the show. It's not just that you have so much fun with these people, but the relationships that you pretend for, you know, six years, you're, you're playing house with these people, you know. Alfonso was my brother, you know, we played this, and, and you know, James played my dad, you know, Tal was my, my sister, like, we played these you start to get used to that, that that's who these people are to you in a strange way. Like they really, Will really is my cousin and I have this relationship with him, you know. So you take it for granted a little and it's over and it's, it was hard. Walking off the set the last day was so hard. Ugh. Really? How, how was yeah. everyone's mood on that last day? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I. I know it was all kind of, it was very surreal and strange and they had taken a lot of, they took the furniture out because that was part of the show too. So the fur, so the room was, the family room was empty. It just felt really weird. And I, you know, I remember having to walk out and I kept thinking, well, if I don't walk out, if I mess up my line, if I just keep messing up, then I'll just extend it. And then I was so frustrated because I was a good girl and I said my line properly and I exited and then it was like, Oh, I wanted to run back in. <laughs> but I didn't do that either. 